Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be testing Remnant 2 on the Steam Deck so Unreal Engine 5 game is verified which I was very surprised about after testing it on my main computer according to the Valve page, by the way I'm using a mouse and keyboard, just personal preference it says that default settings run well on Steam Deck so the default settings is 800p, motion blur on, FSR on performance and everything on low so basically what I have here, but I did a small tweak instead of 1200 by 800 I lowered it a bit to 1152 by 720 you won't really notice much of a difference on the smaller screen I enabled motion blur because we're targeting 30 frames per second XCSS on performance, FSR in this game, at least in my experience, looks super... how to say it... Uh, the jagged edges are very distracting. On XCSS it looks a little bit softer and performs a slightly bit better. In this case we need any frame we can get, everything on low, and that's basically it. Let's get into the game. So I'm here in the hub area where I dropped frames quite a bit when I was playing on PC. There's no pop-in, so Nanite is really noticeable. And despite being a very low resolution, I mean it's half 720p, basically. It still looks good on the Steam Deck screen. A little bit soft, but that's obvious considering the performance. But I've been playing it yesterday night, had a lot of fun, despite the 30fps target. Unfortunately, the 30fps lock on the Steam Deck is a little bit too much of um how to say this the latency is very very noticeable so my advice is to keep either the frame rate unlocked or lock it to 30 inside of the game but so far the hub area was something that ran pretty bad for me so there you go 30 frames per second some stutters here and there the first time but as you can see we're entirely gpu bound as you can see, the GPU is from 15 to 1600 MHz. So yeah, nice to see a GPU bound game finally, a new game that is GPU bound. Still, performance is very, very... How to say it? <laughs> it's basically 30 frames. But I thought it was going to be unplayable, honestly, after playing on PC. I don't know how I'm playing this on Steam Deck, honestly. Despite the resolution being super low, I think the reconstruction technique is doing a good job so far. But as you can see, sometimes even we drop below 30 very, very briefly. So that's why I recommend 1152 by 720 instead of 1280 by 800. At least for what I played so far, I'd say that's the best way. Although I have another configuration, if you don't mind lowering the resolution a little further. You can also, for upscaling, use the Steam Deck's FSR implementation, which is FSR 1, but allows you to control some of the sharpness. Right now, I have it on 1. So if you scroll down, when using a lower resolution, you can affect the sharpness. Zero or I think zero is good. Yeah, it's less obvious. Of course, again, on the Steam Deck screen, it'll look better than what you see in this video. In this video, will probably look very blurry because, well, you're probably watching this on a phone or on a um, television or a PC screen. So, yeah. So let me show you the second configuration that I recommend, that it's more stable, at least on the visuals, in my opinion, but it's internally a lower resolution. So let's get to it. This is personally the way I will play it, so hear me out on this one. <laughs> it's still a 16 by 10 resolution, of course. Also, when you pause the game, there's a big stutter, not sure why. But that's okay, whatever. 960 by 600, so instead of 800p, is 600p. And XESS, we can crank it up to quality. 
So that's basically my advice. 600p, XCSS on quality, everything on low. If you want to push it a bit further, you can go for ultra quality as well. I rather keep it on quality. And uh, unfortunately, motion blur on to hide some of the inconsistency with the visuals. And coming back here, we're back into the 30s. But I don't know, with the. Yeah, this requires more sharpening. This one seemed a bit more stable. So, yeah. There you go. A UE5 game running on the Steam Deck. Again, I didn't think this was going to work like at all. But there we are. It actually works. So it's up to you if you want to do 1152 by 720 or 600p. Personally, 600p is more stable, a, a bit more stable. I don't know, the look of it is fine. I'm not entirely sure why, but there you go. Both look okay on the Steam Deck screen. Although if we keep it up like this, it's probably going to be Next time, next Unreal Engine 5 game with all the features is it's probably going to be too much for the Steam Deck, which is understandable, it's a handheld. So I'm guessing Valve in a mom in at some point is going to get a Steam Deck 2 or something. Which is to be expected, but still. Oh, I'm not paying attention. And again, lock it to 30 if you want to. If you use it on the Steam Deck's menu, this one, there will be lots of latency, so special in this game, so I recommend you do not use this one. Use the one inside the game. Here. And unfortunately the frame times are not great. But it's 30. So up to you. You're probably not going to notice using the Steam Deck controls. I notice more because of mouse and keyboard. But hey, it works. Here we are, <laughs> playing a UE5 game on the Steam Deck. And it's verified, which is kind of surprising, because it will drop below 30 <clears throat> on the default settings. So yeah, if you're interested in the game, it works. I'm probably going to play this on bed, and then when I'm close to my main PC, cloud saves. So that's good, I can play it anywhere now. Oh, and I tested the battery life last night, it's an hour and a half. So you can play the game for an hour and a half on battery alone with these settings. So basically 90 minutes. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. As much as I did testing a UE5 game on a Steam Deck, <laughs> I, was, I didn't think it would actually work, but here we are. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys, thanks for watching.